Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have the definite integral from 1 to 64 of 1 over the cube root of x plus the square root of x dx. So if you want to take a minute, pause the video, try it on your own. I'm just going to jump right in. And the first thing I want to show you is that you need to rewrite that cube root of x in the bottom as x to the 1 third and then the square root of x as x to the 1 half to kind of maybe see how to proceed. And notice x to the 1 third, x to the 1 half at the moment, it might not seem like there's a convenient u sub to do. So I want you to think what's the least common denominator for both those exponents? It's a 6. So that's the u sub that we're going to want to go with. We're going to let u equal x to the 1 sixth. And then I want you to observe u squared would be x to the 1 sixth squared. So that's x to the 2 sixths, which is x to the 1 third. And then u cubed, that would also be x to the 1 sixth cubed, which would be x to the 1 half. And I do have both those terms in my integral. So it's looking like this u sub is going to work out well. Just the next thing I need to do is figure out what is dx in terms of u. So you're going to come back right here to where we wrote out our u sub. u equals x to the 1 sixth. And don't take the derivative just yet. It'll be a hot mess. First, raise both sides to the sixth power. So we have u to the sixth equals x to the first. And then now differentiate. It'll be so much more relaxing. So we're going to have here 6u to the fifth du equals dx. All right, how are we doing? Good. Now, the only other thing I need to do before I can proceed with this substitution is change my limits of integration. So currently, the limits here, 1 and 64, those belong to the variable of the integral, which is x. So I need to figure out what the limits are in terms of u. So just come right here to where we decided what our substitution was going to be and substitute them in for x. So u of 1, 1 to the 1 6, that's still 1. And then u of 64, that's going to be 64 to the 1 6. 6 root of 64 is 2. So whoever wrote this integral really, really loves us. Look, they made such nice numbers. Okay, it was me. I love you all so much. Okay, we have now integral 1 to 2. Now, this dx is going to be replaced with all of this, 6u to the fifth du. So let me just put that all up top here, 6u to the fifth du. Beautiful. Over, and then we've got right here, cube root of x plus square root of x. Well, remember cube root of x, we just said that's exactly u squared and then square root of x is u cubed. So that's what I have in the denominator now. u squared plus u cubed. How are we doing? We're good? Okay, then from here, factor out a u squared from the denominator because notice we can simplify this expression quite a bit. 1 to 2, 6u to the fifth du over u squared times 1 plus u. And then we can cancel, woo woo, cancel the u squared cancel in the numerator, that'll just be a 3 now. So we've got integral from 1 to 2, 6u cubed over 1 plus u du. Okay, what do you do from here? So we've got 6u cubed in the top, 1 plus u in the denominator. Let me take the 6 out. Maybe that'll help you feel less stressed about the whole thing, you know? I mean... When those constants leave the integral and they're outside and you can just focus on what's going on, everyone usually feels a lot better. Okay, the degree of the numerator is higher than the degree of the denominator. So normally I would say, oh yeah, we definitely have to do long division here before we can proceed. I'm always looking for a way out and I don't like doing long division unless I absolutely, absolutely have to. So I'm going to show you something, maybe you wouldn't have thought of it, but it's pretty slick. I'm going to add and subtract 1 and then factor of a sum of cubes so I can cancel. And you might say, Professor V, I don't know what, what that means. Let me show you right now. So add 1, subtract 1. And then this is going to be 6 times the integral from 1 to 2. u cubed plus 1 over 1 plus u minus 1 over 1 plus u. Are you all right? Oh, good. Okay. Now, u cubed plus 1 up here in the numerator, that's a sum of cubes. I can factor it. Do you remember how a sum of cubes factors? I hope so. That's the thing with math. You can't forget anything. 
So u cubed plus one is gonna factor into u plus one times u squared minus u plus one, and then this is all over one plus u. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Can you see where this is going? Because now I can cancel that one plus u in the denominator, and that was exactly what was terrorizing me this whole time. And then now all I'm left with is six integral one to two, and then we've got u squared minus u plus one minus one over one plus u du. And then we can just integrate term by term. We have a relaxing little polynomial, and then we just have this one little term. I know it's antiderivative. It's just going to involve natural log, and we can be on our merry little way. So we've got six times. Antiderivative is going to be one-third u cubed minus one-half u squared plus u minus ln absolute value one plus u and then this gets evaluated from one to two and then normally i would actually already plug in the limits of integration but i'm looking since i have these fractions and their <laughs> least common denominator is six and i've got that six sitting outside i'm like let's just distribute that through and then plug in the limits of integration it should make for simplifying a lot more straightforward. We will have less fractions. We'll actually have zero fractions. Who doesn't love being fraction free? So 2u cubed minus 3u squared plus 6u minus 6 ln absolute value 1 plus u and then we're gonna evaluate now from 1 to 2 and then this is the relaxing part. Just don't screw up. How sad would that be? So 2 times 8 minus 3 times 4 plus six times two, that's 12, minus six ln three, that's the upper limit, minus lower limit's gonna be two minus three plus six minus six ln two, good? Okay, and then combining all your like terms, you're gonna end up with 11 minus six ln of three plus six ln of two, and then I can combine those, right? If I factor out the six, then we have ln of two minus ln of three, and oh, let's use those natural log properties, 11 plus six ln two thirds, voila. And we are done. So comment down below, let me know if you got the right answer. Did you do something different? Did you think to add and subtract one and do the factoring of the sum of cubes? I would be so surprised, but maybe, maybe you're thinking like me, maybe I've got you trained a certain way to see problems the way I do. If you need help with any of your integration techniques, then check out the video lectures that are linked in the description. And I will be back sooner than later with more videos and integrals of the day for you all. I also have to make more content for Calc 3, especially on the last chapter. I want to make a video before it's finals about that last chapter involving all of the vector calculus topics, especially Stokes theorem, Green's theorem, Divergence theorem, and kind of clarifying exactly what's going on. So stay tuned for that, especially if you're in Calc 3. Thank you guys so much for your support. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll be back sooner than later.